So this matching procedure is to do what's called a conjugate match, or sometimes we call that the gain match. So the first thing that we do is to normalize the source and load impedance to Z sub zero or Z naught. To normalize, we're just going to divide the uh, load and source impedances by the characteristic impedance. And I try and use a scripted lettering for lowercase, uh, just noting that un the unfortunate thing about the English language is that we have many capital letters that look exactly the same as our lowercase letters. Next, we're going to plot the source impedance and the complex conjugate of the load impedance on the Smith chart. This is if we're going to match from the source impedance to the load impedance. We can also do this procedure in reverse where we would start at the load impedance and match to the complex conjugate of the source impedance. Next, we're going to choose our topology, and we have a lot of choice in our topology. We can choose high pass network, low pass network, tapped L, tapped C. We can choose the number of components. So we have a lot of things, a lot of degrees of freedom here. And these are going to be dictated by your design. From there, we simply follow the rules for adding passes. We start at our source impedance and we add passes in order to try and connect a line between our source impedance and the complex conjugate of our load impedance. Once we've made the connection, we can calculate component values by reading the normalized values from the chart and unnormalizing them. I wanted to add one thing about the quality factor in the network, and that the quality factor can be read directly from the Smith chart. So we can read intersections where we have some value, for instance, of resistance and some value of reactance. And if we were to find the value here of x over r, this would be one of our basic definitions for quality factor. Then you can imagine that we could plot a locus of these points where we would have a constant quality factor along this locus, and it would work on both the capacitive and inductive side of the Smith chart. And this ends up looking kind of like a, an American football. And of course, this would have some locus of value say Q naught, and if we were to go to a different locus, we could find a higher value of Q naught. The closer we get to the edge of the chart with this, the higher the quality factor. It means that we have less reactance or less resistance and more reactance. Uh, so this is a way that we can use this mid chart to predict the quality factor, factor of our network. Uh, for instance, as we're doing matches, we can try and keep our matches from hitting different values of quality factor. So with that, we will stop the Smith chart, and next we will look at a little bit about integrative passives before we start to look at power amplifiers.